look who's here, people. Doctor, Brother Neil. You demand Brother Neil. himself. How you doing, man? Good to see you. All right. Been too long? It's been too I long. Think BC. Yeah. Like before COVID. Before COVID. <laughs> I think that's a true fact. You remember the founders? Uh, no, I remember this, this building. But look at the shirt collars. Those were the days. That was the thing. Yeah. So Bruce Murray, Carl Sagan. Mm -hmm. Lou Friedman. Lou's still around. Yeah. Bruce was the guy who was head of JPL during the Voyager Viking missions, okay. the heyday of right. haying of day. And he is supposed to be the guy that said we got to have cameras on space. Yes. Yeah. So this was you, Neil, who said we need within it rather than in it. I remember it was on a uh, board of directors phone call. Oh, I was on the board back when we were in grandma's house. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And this, this place is still kind of new to me. Uh, well, check it out. You know about our beloved light sail spacecraft. Yeah, you offered it. Here's the uh, sail material. Very light. Well, not just that, it's crazy thin. It's a 20th of your hair. Look, there's Carl in 1976. And he's wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> it's really unusual. <laughs> what, is, what is unusual is no medallion. Remind me, like, what's the point? Uh, to prove. We have fuel. <laughs> Oh, because it, oh, it can last forever. It can, and so if you have a, let's say you have a mission where you want to keep track of asteroids. And uh, as you may know, looking for an asteroid is like looking for a charcoal briquette in the dark. What would be ideal is if you had a spacecraft that could keep station with Earth as it went around the sun, but could be in an inferior orbit so you could look out into the darkness, the icy blackness of space, and find asteroids. But in order to keep station with Earth, you have to go, you'd have to need some force to keep you from falling in or going around as fast as, say, I Venus guess. or one of these okay, things. Okay, so be a supplemental well, vector be a, for you. Yeah. A supplemental vector day and night, yeah. except it's in space, there's no night. <laughs> this was a big deal. We pulled off, we pulled this off that, you know, it was Johann Kepler. I heard of it. 1607. I've heard of He looked at what was later called Comet Holly mm -hmm. and said, perhaps one day humankind will sail on sunbeams the same way we sail the winds of the sea in the sunbeams of the cosmic ocean. And so Sagan and these guys thought this would be a great thing and mm -hmm. we pulled it off. And we did it with Planetary Society members, just 50,000 people who think spaceflight is cool. Mm -hmm. And we did it for $7 million, about a 20th of what a space agency could do it for. Anyway, you want to touch Mars? Here's a Mars meteorite. Yeah. You can touch. And Mars that we found on Earth. Yes, it came yeah, to yeah, Earth, yeah, yes. Yeah. And so I, as you know, I'm shiny and object tinkerer, man. We found this sitting essentially in a drawer and I drilled these four holes and bought these Mounts. You're Choice. ahead of the organization. Why are you mounting things on the wall? Because I love the place. Here's the original Ballast Marineris. Mm -hmm. They would fly a lipstick cam down here. Oh, for Cosmos? Yes, for Cosmos, oh. the original, yes. There is a giant rift in its surface, 5,000 kilometers long. It's called Ballast Marineris. Here's the original, and then this year's letters from Congress establishing the Planetary Science Caucus. We were very proud of this. This is what the Planetary Society does. By the way, speaking of John Culberson, he was the guy that really pushed for funding the Europa Clipper mission. Which just launched. Which just launched. Minutes ago. Yeah. And the Planetary Society is why we like to say is how that mission got funded. Our members wrote thousands, tens of thousands really? of emails and letters to Congress to get that mission funded. I've been to your little place there in New York, the Rose Center. Rose Center, Hayden Planetarium, yeah. And uh, the planets are not lit <clears throat> from within. No. But here you can we, you can adjust you the lights. Planet on and off? Yeah, if you want, and you can adjust the brightness. No, here's what I'm saying. We considered that. Yeah, and then you couldn't do it. No, 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 we considered it. And I said, no, because planets are not lit from the inside but, in real life. They're lit from the outside. They're beautiful, lit from their ornaments, lit from the inside. Yes. But it's just not astrophysically real. This is another thing from JPL. So what we want you to do, we start this spinning. It's very, um, mm -hmm. very uh, low friction spin. I love it. It's got the center mass is not in the center of the object. It's a, it's a bare good. center. Then you 
launch your spacecraft uh, mm -hmm. in time to go in orbit around Jupiter. So this is what two astrophysicists do, or an astrophysicist and mechanical engineer is play with the magnetic ball shooter. <laughs> but it is spiritually exactly what orbital mechanicians do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know, this is why we run these tests. So this has a magnetic attraction to it? Yeah. So have to get close enough to it. There you go. Yeah. So that would have been a catastrophic. Yeah, well, that's would have not been, good. Uh, what's that's it? not good. Would have been Huygens probe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's pretty oh! solid. Nice, nice, nice. Slick shot. Very nice. Three tries. Yeah. Three anyway, tries of charms. So this is the uh, the audio studio now. This was the bank vault. Really? Yeah. Uh, what was in this building? It was a bank. Okay. It was, uh, yeah. Wow. But this isn't the reason to join the planetary side. It's just interesting. Nice. And we shoot all kinds of, and this is where we do the podcast now. Paintings that go back this way into uh, time. We started with flight. We're the planetary yeah, science. Right? Did you know? What path this is? I mean, not a parabola. It's, it's a hyper. A parabola. It's, a it's hyperbolic a sign. It's none of the above. It's not a cinch or a cosh. It's somebody else. Hyperbolic sign. Hyperbolic cosine. Because. Okay. If it is that, that's not what's most interesting about it. Oh, okay. What is interesting about it? I will tell you. Do you remember? You remember from engineering, physics, okay? The Brachistochrone problem. Oh, here, so I'm sure I should do this. Sorry. The Brachistochrone problem? Problem? <laughs> <laughs> the, who are the two brothers who were challenging Orville each other? Orville and Wilbur? The no, Bernoulli brothers, whatever. Uh, there were two brothers who kept challenging each other. Cain and Abel. So, you you have a ball here. It, it, it can slide or roll, it doesn't matter. At a certain height. And you want to get it to here. Oh. And you have to ask, what path will get it there fastest? So it's a ex exponential. Okay, which minimizes the energy of what is consumed I in that I think it's going to be an exponential. Okay. I'm so feeling if it. If it's a straight line, okay, that's fine. But if it drops first, it gets extra gravitational energy to then go that extra distance, because this is a bigger distance than a straight line would be. You'd think a straight line. At first, you might think that. Right, but it's not. So it has to drop, and it drops enough, and then it curls over, okay? That path is the solution to what's called the Brachistochrone problem. And if you invert that to a launch, that's why the ship goes up vertically for a while, and then it's a pretty rapid over the top, twist they say. over the top. The roll program. Where do we get the Christochrome from? Cr I crone, it's a crone in there, for crone. 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 And I don't know about the... the you got to look that up. That yeah. should be a knowledge of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Because we love total energy. We love um, yeah. the the rocket equation. Yes, we're we're all, all together. All we're together. kooky. So that's why, equation. this is not quite fun, right? So it would be vertical more and then... Well, vertical. you don't know, because I think what's happening, based on a photograph, it's projected. So you're going to have a component this way. It's not just two-dimensional. Yeah, but I think no matter how you project something that's mostly vertical, it's not going to be that angle. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, is it coming from below the horizon? Yeah, but then you wouldn't have all the stages of the rocket there. That looks like it was just You launched. may be right, but <laughs> it's uh, two nerds going at it. We're going to look into the Bacristochrone. We're going to find... Yeah. I should know so, that. So I used to have what, a job. What happens on this board? Uh, magical thinking that is it. amazing. Yeah. So what goes on here? Oh, this is... You can grow old doing this. You uh, swing this and try to get it hooked on the... Uh, and what's this hook. for? Uh, you keep score. Who's got the most... <laughs> so, no, but... That's all this does? Yeah. I challenge you. All right. You go first. Yeah, okay. Oop. Okay. Score's even. Oop. All right. Camera crew's got nothing to do. We'll be here all night. Three days later. Oh, nice. So he's got... Oh, well, I, I get one more to go. Yep, so he's okay. got one. Okay. Oh, now we're back even. Okay. <sighs> Go for it, Neil. Show us what you got. Oh, 
A tie? Oh, that's cool. Perfect, man. Here's Victoria Crater. And there's the Spirit Rover, if you know where to look. Way up here someplace. There. You'll see. Just very small. It's up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like the fact that, you know, the place is old enough. You get craters on the edges of craters. I know. You know? And there's so many craters. It's a crater mm -hmm. festival. Look at them all. Look at all these impacts. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have Mars rocks here on Earth. Yeah. Except in space, there's no sound. It's just when mm. they land here. Uh, so then you may remember, send your name to Mars, a ceramic compact disc. I was never much into that. Well, there, we have 50,000 people who think it's cool and fun. <laughs> then do you remember living interplanetary flight experiment? We had a patent on this uh, assembly system where you could take it apart and get to the microbes and the water bears. It was going to go to Phobos, moon of Mars. But a Russian rocket ended up in the Barents Sea, part of the Arctic. Sunk, gone, boom. But we man did manage to fly a second one on the second to last shuttle mission mm -hmm. to prove that you could put it together, fly it, take it apart without contaminating anything. That was the patent. It has Great this point. crazy laser. Bzz, bzz, you don't want to forward it. or reverse contaminate with life. That's right. life always finds a way. Oh. <laughs> you could be a screenwriter. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, this, uh, we did a deal with Lego. Uh, Lego. Yeah, and so this, w one of these is sitting on the surface of Dude, Mars. Legos on Mars? So, it's, yeah, astronauts, whoa! <laughs> well, the first astronaut. <laughs> one giant leap. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> but be careful, there's not that many of them. <laughs> I think if you're an astronaut on Mars, you'll be able to avoid them. <laughs> So Ooh, you made circuit board. Yeah. Love so it. this is, uh, you know, Paul Horowitz, who's still around at Harvard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was my advisor. He was my physics advisor. Yeah, that is cool. That really is cool. There yeah, he is. These are memory a, chips here. I remember you. And you here's here. fast Fourier transform. That's the the multiple channel uh, listening device. Yeah, that's Paul Horowitz right there. Yeah. Is yeah. That, is that Carl? Yes. And yeah. Steven Spielberg, because they used to be buds. Spielberg was on the advisory council mm -hmm. back in the mm -hmm. day. So it's a. Historical happy little thing. So is he holding a baby? Why is he holding a baby? I think it was a his wife helped him produce that. I think. Oh. Yeah. And then here, are some of your books are in here in the conference room, and uh, some Carl's books, some uh, John Loxon guys on the board of directors. Wait, wait. So most shelves are by subject, but you have a shelf and Carl has a shelf. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Here we are. <laughs> and there's a shelf for you. No, I don't see Yeah, yeah. It's not we don't have enough room for all of your books. Oh, Neil, you'd like this. Danielle, you're not busy, are you? <laughs> but I remember you Danielle. And so I was giving her the speech one time about all the different ways to write I. Okay. You know, there's uh, that's square root of negative one, but J in engineering, because the I is used for unit vector. There's a unit vector. Uh, moment of inertia or second moment, that's uh -huh. impulse. Uh -huh. And then uh, the left-handed eye is what I use for current. Uh -huh. But here are the four moons fitting in the curl of your fingers, which you showed alumna Lori Robinson, whose son married Sasha Sagan one time in a restaurant in New York. And okay. Danielle has had to sit through this more than once. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can't have all this without having the greatest equation there ever was. Uh, was that something something pi? Wait, Euler's equation. Euler, okay. yeah. This is, is just freaking crazy. <laughs> there are posters that say, either that pi was negative, therefore God exists. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, and this, is, if I remember correctly, this comes from. Of course you remember correctly. And, and then so, you expand the sine and the cosine in the Taylor series, and then all the terms cancel. Yep. Plug in pi for theta, and it reduces to this. Yep. Yep. And by the way, where is there isn't e to the j omega t up here someplace? Right there. Yes. So that is an omega. Yeah. Lowercase omega. So e to the j omega t is sines and cosines. This is all these are all worship uh -huh. worship uh, equations. Yeah. And that humans figure this out. We think we're some kind of big deal. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, Neil, these are pictures that we took with our light sail spacecraft. Light sail? Yep. It's received sunlight. 
photons, and the photon hits it, reflects back, transferring momentum to the sail that it took away from the photon. The photon can't slow down, so you must change the energy of the photon. Yes, change frequency. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. You need to be patient or not have be in a hurry to, because that, that small force, you're relying on it being sustained so that it can impart ultimately a much larger shift. Well, it can get it to go somewhere. And so Johann Kepler, 1607, watching the comet that later became Comet Holly. You had a couple of, a contemporary of Galileo. There we are. Yeah. He observed that whether the comet was coming in toward the sun or going away, oh. the tail always pointed away from the sun. Brilliant observation. And he inferred that there must be something about sunlight. Sun's press, pressing. Doing something to the comet. Figured that out. It's not bad. It's not bad. Just yeah. think of all the stuff I've seen and not drawn conclusions. <laughs> huh. No, it's amazing. The guy was amazing. Well, he got Kepler's laws. <laughs> and it was in your class at Princeton. Yeah, I invited you. And I hid out in the back. Yes, without I, your bow tie on. And I slipped a bow tie on. And then he tied the bow tie without And the woman right. next to me, this is a college aged. Yeah, when I, when person I Princeton, yes, we're, was we're didn't even notice, right? And right. you deliberately did. My recollection is R squared over T cubed yes. as a hilarious comedy gag instead of R cubed over T squared. Oh, and you were supposed to come and, and fix then it, and I did. Yeah, and then one thing right, right, led to another. You were going to say, "Excuse me," that's, that's what wrong. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then people, then people saw you. They they lost their shit. Okay, yeah, it was good. <laughs> It was good. It was your idea. It was Astrophysics 203 it was. We yes. made a textbook out of that class, actually. Yeah. Before we go into my office, there's uh, Jupiter from the first Star Trek movie. And here's a letter from your buddy Gene Roddenberry to us. Very supportive of the planetary side because he and Carl Sagan were so, buds. Uh, you don't have to paint what no one's going to show, right? <laughs> so, the, so you're talking about Star Trek the movie. That was the full title, I think. And so this is when they came, when they, they did a gravity, a, a braking maneuver around. Good right. Except no sound. <laughs> is your office? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. by the way, after you, after the thing's flying, there's nothing to do. After the spacecraft is launched, mm -hmm. we can't really help. Well, let's rent surfboards. Okay. Mm, okay. Oh, in Florida. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here's the office. All right. 